so then um, sometime later Parvata Muni and, and Narada were traveling around the universe <laughs> that's what they do you know Narada Muni has this this vena that when he plays it he can travel anywhere in any world any planet any dimension any time you know he has complete freedom so anyway, Narda and Parvata were, were traveling around and they decided, hey, let's go visit. Narda was probably telling him, you know, let's go visit that hunter. But remember I told you about that hunter? Well, he's been chanting for a while now. Let's see. You know, so they went and uh, they came to where the hunter was sitting. And when he saw Narda Muni, his guru, he came out. Oh, he was just full of ecstatic love and, and he was chanting and crying and all ecstatic symptoms and then he, he came and he was about to pay his obeisances right but there were some ants crawling on the ground so he he said oh just a minute and he took his cloth and he was very carefully cleaning the ants out of the way so he could pay his dandabats at the feet of his guru and Parvata Muni said oh this is so wonderful that formerly this this guy was so violent and so cruel but now he's become so gentle by the power of the holy name that he doesn't even want to harm an ant. Huh? He'll, he'll move the ants very carefully out of the way so that he doesn't hurt them. So this is so wonderful. And then he spoke that verse. Narada, you're so kind that simply by your good wishes uh, you can make someone a great devotee with great ecstatic love like that. So Narada did this several times, probably more times than we know about, huh? many times. And uh, some of the stories are related in the Srimad Bhagavatam, uh, how devotees came to ecstatic love just by Narada's good wishes. Mm -hmm. Narada is such a great devotee. So similarly, Srila Prabhupada came to the West and just by his good wishes, so many nice devotees came to Lord Krishna. Huh? Just by his blessings. There's no other cause. <laughs> we were all such rascals. I mean, really. Such nonsense people. Huh? With no knowledge, no self-control, huh? no mental gravity, nothing. You know? And But Prabhupada took us and somehow by his good wishes, we developed into nice devotees. Some of us did. Yeah. It depends on the sincerity of the soul. You know, if, if someone is sincere and they get mercy like that, then they can advance very, very far. You know? If someone's not sincere, even if they get mercy, they, they'll blow it. They won't get the result. So, uh, uh, grateful if we get the opportunity to render devotional service, especially direct devotional service to a self-realized soul, we should be very careful not to misuse this opportunity, uh, but to, to value it and get the most out of it. Uh, because this is very, very rare. Very, very rare. How, how long have we been preaching now? Three years? Four years? I mean, you know, on any kind of scale. And, uh, you know, in a few more years, we're going to wind up our activities. Um, things are going to get so crazy that it's going to be very hard to, to preach, especially the way we're preaching now. Uh, so out of maybe a life of 70 years or something like that, I will be preaching a total of less than 10 years. Publicly available. Huh? I may still be available to my close disciples but not publicly available uh, I can see that time coming yeah. so if this if this material is valuable to you if these instructions are valuable to you take them use them put them into practice now it's not going to be here forever an es esoteric school is never open forever uh, they come and go they manifest and then they're withdrawn back into the spiritual world. And then they manifest in a different way. And then again they're withdrawn. Huh? Every generation 
the esoteric school is created again from, from scratch, from zero. See, from the heart of the self-realized soul. That is a real esoteric school. Huh? If you have a, a big buildings and big church and big organization and stuff like that, that's not an esoteric school. That's an, that's an organization. That's an institution. That's a church. It can't have the same structure. It can't have the same potency. Huh? Esoteric school is a very rare thing. It springs into existence from the transcendental platform. Uh, and then again, it's withdrawn. It doesn't last forever. It can't, because anything in this material world that, that lasts for some time becomes corrupt. We see it again and again. So if it's going to stay fresh, if it's going to stay real, authentic, then it has to be manifested and then withdrawn and then manifested in a different place, a different time, in a different way, under a different name, from a different teacher. That's just the way it is. huh? It's just the way it is. And now I could go into a long lecture about hyperdimensional uh, shadows and time and the higher fractal shapes of reality and all this stuff. But what it really comes down to is get it while you can. <laughs> Get it while you can. Okay? So, uh, without a lot of metaphysical baggage. Uh, it's available now, so get it now. If you can get it, if you can download it, if you can store it, if you can save it, if you can pass it on, that's very good service. So do that. Uh, we recommend that. We, we ask that. Uh, we ask that you do that. Because people did that, we know about great teachers, great masters, incarnations of the Lord, and so many things. Because this information was passed down from ancient times. Parampara. Evam parampara praptam imam rajrishayo vidu. This uh, ancient knowledge was passed down by the process of disciplic succession. And the great kings understood it in that way. But now, Krishna says, the succession has been broken. So I have to speak the knowledge again. See, this is what happens every time. A school will manifest for some time, then it will be withdrawn, but the shell, the skeleton, or the, the form, the external form of the school will go on. Uh, but it has become material because the, the soul or the heart has been withdrawn back to the spiritual world. See, that's, that's what happened in ISKCON. That's what happened in the Christian church. That's what happens to every authentic school. Huh? The master comes for some time, manifests a school, then it's withdrawn. Okay? And it comes again in a different place in time. If there's material continuity, be very suspect. Because usually anything that exists in this material world for any length of time becomes corrupt. There's the natural influence of this world, the material energy. It's maya, it's illusion. Maya mean, literally means that which does not exist. And so because this world is temporary, it's considered it does not really exist. It has only relative existence. So by the, by the grace or by the blessing or by the uh, good wishes or by the glance of a pure devotee, one can get this devotional service. Or by the instruction or the, the words of Krishna, one can get it. When Krishna explains himself, this is very powerful. Now, Krishna explains himself in Bhagavad Gita. He explains himself in Srimad Bhagavatam. He explains himself in many places in the Puranas. And when we read these explanations, they're so crystal clear and so penetrating and so, so you know, beautiful and perfect. Krishna's intelligence is much, much higher than ours. So we should take shelter of these statements and bring them into our hearts. Uh, let them guide us. Let them inspire us. And by 
uh, taking full shelter of Krishna's instructions, then we get his mercy. That's how we get his mercy. We have to receive the mercy. And to do that, we have to put down our attachments. You see? If I want to give you uh, some diamonds, but you're carrying a big bag of rocks, then you can't receive it. You have to put down the bag of rocks. Then you can get the diamonds. See? I want to give you something that's so valuable. It's so valuable, it's contained in his 16 little words. <laughs> huh? the, the meaning of those 16 words fills a whole huge shelf of books. Hours and hours and hours of videos and hours of, of and, and years and years of practice are necessary to understand the meaning of these 16 little words. <laughs>